My TV was even more excited than Grandpa Joe at seeing a bar of chocolate being sent by television. But Mr. Wong Tri, he shouted, Can you send other things through the air in the same way? Breakfast cereal, for instance? Oh, my sainted aunt, cried Mr. Wong Tri. Don't mention that distrusting stuff in front of me. Do you know that breakfast cereal, what breakfast cereal is made of? It is made of all those curly wooden shavings you'll find in pencil sharpeners. But could you send it by television if you wanted to as you do chocolate? Asked Mike TV. Of course I could. And what about people? Asked Mike TV. Could you send a real-life person from one place to another in the same way? A person? cried Mr. Wong Tra. Are you off your rotter? But could it be done? Good heavens, child. I really don't know. I suppose it could, yes. I'm pretty sure it could. Of course it could. I wouldn't like to risk it, though. It might have enough... It might have some nasty results. But my TV was already off and running. The moment he heard Mr. Wong Tra say, I'm pretty sure it could, or cross it could, he turned away and started running as fast as he could towards the end of the room where the great camera was standing. Look at me, he shouted as he ran. I'm going to be the first person in the world to be sent by television. No, 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 cried Mr. Wong Tra. Mike, screamed Mrs. TV. Stop, come back. You'll turn into a million tiny pieces. But there was no stopping Mike TV now. The crazy boy rushed on, and when he reached the enormous camera, he jumped straight for the switch, scattering Oompa Loompas right and left as he went. See you later, alligator, he shouted, and he put down the switch. As he did so, he leaped out into the full glare of the mighty lens. There was a blinding flash, then there was silence. Then Mrs. TV ran forward, but she stopped dead in the middle of the room, and she stood there. She stood staring at the place where her son had been, and her great red mouth opened wide and screamed. He's drawn, he's drawn. Great heavens, he has drawn, shouted Mr. TV. Mr. Wong Tra cried, hurried forward and placed a hand gently on Mrs. TV's shoulder. We shall have to hope for the best, he said. We must pray that your little boy will come out unharmed at the other end. Mike, screamed Mrs. TV, clasping her head in her hands. Where are you? I'll tell you where he is, said Mr. TV. He's whizzing around above our heads in a million tiny pieces. Don't talk about it, Miss. Well, Mrs. TV. We must watch the television set, said Mr. Wong Tra. He may come true any moment. Mr. and Mi Mrs. TV and Grandpa Joe and little Charlie and Mr. Wong Tra all gathered around the television and stared tensely at the screen. The screen was quite blank. He is taking a heck of a long time to climb across, said Mr. TV, wiping his brow. Oh dear, oh dear, said Mr. Wong Tra. I do hope that no part of him gets left behind. What on earth do you mean? asked Mr. TV sharply. I don't wish to alarm you, said Mr. Wong Tra. But it does sometimes happen that only half the little pieces find their way into the television set. It happened last week. I don't know why, but the results was that only half a chocolate bar came true. Mrs. TV let out a stream of horror. You mean only of half of might is coming back to us? She cried. 
Let's hope it's the top half, said Mr. D.V. Hold everything, said Mr. Wonka. Watch the screen. Something's happening. The screen had suddenly begun to flutter. Then some wavy lines appeared. Mr. Wonka adjusted one of the knobs and the wavy lines went away. And now, very slowly, the green began to get brighter and brighter. Here he comes, yelled Mr. Wonka. Yes, that's him, all right. Is he all in one piece? cried Mr. Wonka. Cried Mr. TV. I am not sure, said Mr. Wonka. It's too early to tell. Faintly at first, but becoming clearer and clearer. Every second, the picture of Mike TV appeared on the screen. He was standing up and waving at the audience and grinning from year to year. But he's a midget, shouted Mr. TV. Mike, cried Mrs. TV, are you all right? Are there any bits of you missing? Isn't he going to get any bitter? shouted Miss, Mr. TV. Talk to me, Mike, cried Mrs. TV. Say something. Tell me you're all right. A tiny little voice, no louder than the squeaking of a mouse, came out of the television set. Hi, Mom, it said. Hi, Pop. Look at me. I'm the first person ever to be sent by television. Grab him, ordered Mr. Wonka. Quick, Mrs. TV shot out a hand and picked up the tiny figure of Mike TV out of the screen. Hooray, cried Mr. Wonka. He's all in one piece. He is completely unharmed. You call that unharmed, snapped Mrs. TV, peering at the little speck of a boy who was now running to and fro across the palm of her hand, waving his pistols in the air. He w- was certainly not more than an inch tall. He's shrunk, said Mr. TV. Of course he's shrunk, said Mr. Wonka. What did you expect? Di- this is terrible, well, Mrs. TV. What are we going to do? And Mr. TV said, we can't send him back to school like this. He'll get trodden on. He'll get squashed. He won't be able to do anything, cried Mrs. TV. Oh, yes, I will, shrieked the tiny voice of Mike TV. I'll be able to watch television. Never again, shouted Mr. TV. I'm throwing the television set out the window the moment we get home. I had enough of television. When he heard this, Mike TV flew into a terrible tantrum. He started jumping up and down on the palm of his mother's hand, screaming and yelling and trying to bite her fingers. I want to watch television, he shrieked. I want to watch television. I want to watch television. I want to watch television. Here, give him to me. said Mr. TV, and he took the tiny boy and shoved him into the breast pocket of his jacket and stuffed the handkerchief on top. Strews and yells came from inside the pocket, and the pocket shook as the furious little prisoner fought to get out. Oh, Mr. Wonka, well, Mrs. TV, how can we make him go? Well, said Mr. Wonka, stroking his beard. And gazing thoughtfully at the ceiling. I must say that's a wee bit treatly, but small boys are extremely bingy and elastic. They stretch like mad, so we'll do. So what we'll do we'll put him in a special machine I have for testing the stretchiness of chewing gum. Maybe that will bring him back to what he was. Oh, thank you, said Mrs. TV. Don't mention it, dear lady. How far do you think he'll stretch? 
asked Mr. TV. Maybe Mouse, said Mr. Wonka. Who knows, but he's gonna be to be awfully thin. Everything gets thinner when you stretch it. You mean like chewing gum? asked Mr. TV. Exactly. How thin will he be? asked Mrs. TV anxiously. I haven't the foddiest idea, said Mr. Wonka. And it doesn't really matter anyway, because we'll soon fatten him up again. All we'll have to do is give him a triple overdose of my wonderful super vitamin chocolate. Super vitamin chocolate contains huge amount of vitamin A and vitamin B. B. It also contains vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin F, vitamin G, vitamin I, vitamin J, vitamin K, vitamin L, vitamin M, vitamin N, Vitamin O, Vitamin P, Vitamin Q, Vitamin R, Vitamin T, Vitamin U, Vitamin V, Vitamin W, Vitamin X, Vitamin Y, and believe it or not, Vitamin Z. The only two vitamins it doesn't have in are Vitamin S, because it makes you sick, and Vitamin H, because it makes you grow horns on top of your head, like bull. It does have in it a very small amount of rarest and most magical vitamin of them all. Vitamin Wonka. And what would that do to him? asked Mr. TV anxiously. It will make his toes grow out until they are as long as his fingers. Oh no, cried Mrs. TV. Don't be silly, said Mr. Wonka. It's most useful. He'll be able to play piano with his feet. Mr. Wonka. No arguments, please, said Mr. Wonka. He turned away and clicked his fingers three times in the air. And Oompa Loompa appeared immediately and stood beside him. Follow these orders, said Mr. Wonka, heading handing the Oompa Loompa a piece of paper and on which he had written full instructions. And you'll find the boy in his father's portrait. Off you go. Goodbye, Mr. TV. Goodbye, Mrs. TV. And please don't look so worried. They'll all come out in the wash. You know, every one of them. At the end of the room, the Oompa Loompas around the giant camera were already beating their tiny drums and beginning to jog up and down to the rhythm. There they go again, said Mr. Wonka. I'm afraid you can't stop them singing. Little Charlie caught Grandpa Joe's hand and the two of them stood beside Mr. Wonka in the middle of the long Bread room listening to the Oompa Loompas, and this is what they sang. The most important thing we have learned so far as children are concerned is never, never, never let them near your television set. Or better still, just don't install the idiotic thing at all. In almost every house we've been, we watch them dipping at the screen. They loll and slop, they lounge about. They stare until their eyes pop out. Last week, in someone's place, we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor. They sit and stare and stare and sit until they are hypnotized by it. Until they are absolutely drunk with all that shocking, ghastly junk. Oh yes, we know it keeps them still. They don't climb out the window sill. They never fight or kick or punch. They leave you free to cook the lunch and wash the dishes in the sink. But did you ever stop to think, to wonder just exactly what this does do to your beloved thoughts? It rots the senses in the head. 
it tears imagination dead, it clouds and clutters up the mind, it makes a child so dull and blind, he can no longer understand, a fantasy a fairyland, his brain becomes as soft as cheese, his powers of thinking rust and freeze, he cannot think, he only sees. All right, you try, all right, you say, but if we take the set away, what shall we do to entertain our dear, our darling children? Please explain. We'll answer this by asking you, what use the darling wants to do? How you stay cheap, then self-contented, before this monster was invented? Have you forgotten, don't you know? We'll say it very loud and slow. They used to read, they read and read and read and read and then proceed to read some more. Great start, that one half their lives was reading books. The nursery shelves held books the law, books cluttered up the nursery floor. And in the bedroom, by the bed, more books were waiting to be read. Such wondrous, fine, fantastic tales of dragons, gypsies, queens, and whales, and treasure isles and distant shores where smugglers rode with muffled oars, and pirates wearing purple pants, the, and sailing ships and elephants, and cannibals crouching round the pot, staring away at something hot. It smells so good, what can it be? Good gracious, it's Penelope. The younger ones had Beatrix Potter with Mr. Todd the Dirty Rotter, and Squirrel Nutkins Piddling Bland, and Mrs. Diddy Winkle and Just how the camel got his hump, and how the monkey lost his rump, and Mr. Todd and Bless My Soul, there's Mr. Rag and Mr. Moe. Oh, books, what books used to know, those children living long ago. Oh, please, oh, please, we beg, we pray, we go through your TV set away, and in its place you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall, then fill the shelves with lots of books, ignoring all the dirty looks, the screams and yells, the bites and kicks, and children hitting you with sticks. Fear not, because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do, they'll now begin to feel the need of having something good to read. And once they start, oh boy, oh boy, you watch the, the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts. They'll grow so thin, they'll wonder what they ever seen in that ridiculous machine, that nauseating foul unclean, repulsive television screen, and later each and every teeth will love you more for what you did. P.S. Regarding my TV, we very much regret that we shall simply have to wait and see if we can get him back his height. But if we can, it serves him right.